I'd like to talk about dub converter with trapezoidal wave heating capability for DC ion battery of electric vehicles. Here you can see today's highlights. At low temperatures, DC ion batteries in electric vehicles need to be adequately heated to prevent a decrease in a cruising distance. Today, I will propose a dub converter integrating an AC heating inverter to improve the cruising distance of EV in cold areas. This converter can generate trapezoidal current wave by PWM control and achieves a shortened heating time and inductor miniaturization. Experimental results demonstrated that the proposed converter halves the heating time compared to the conventional sinusoidal wave. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce heating the battery. Second, I will talk about the issues of traditional heating methods. Then, I will present the proposed gap converter. Lastly, I will describe experimental results. I will start by giving heating up the battery. Here, you can see the graph about the discharge characteristics of the leaf with C over 3 rate at 4 temperatures. A horizontal axis shows time and the vertical axis shows the voltage of the leaf. Focusing on the dark blue line of minus 20 degrees Celsius, you can see the deduced discharging voltage and time due to the increased internal resistance at low temperatures. These deep characteristics significantly shorten cruising distance of EVs in practical use. Therefore, proper heating for leaves is necessary in cold areas. Therefore, various heating methods have been proposed, and the common way is external heating. This figure shows a battery system using an external heating technique. The leaf is connected to a bidirectional converter, like a dove converter, and heated by an external heater through a heating medium, like air or liquid. This technique has a problem of low heating efficiency due to a heat leak at a heating medium. And also, in the practical use of electric vehicles, since the battery system is so huge, uniform heating is difficult. It leads to premature deterioration of leaf. To solve these problems, internal AC heating techniques have attracted significant research attention. This figure shows a simplified impedance model of a leaf. The positive and negative electrodes are represented by an LC power circuit, and the electrolyte solvent is represented by a pure resistance. When a DC current flows through the leaf, ions move between positive and negative electrodes, and the leaf is charged or discharged. Internal AC heating technique heats up the battery by joule heat generated by AC current such as triangular or sinusoidal waves flowing through solvent resistance. By heating up the leaf from the inside, high heating efficiency and uniform temperature distribution can be achieved. The charge reaction at low temperatures may cause disimposition or surface of the negative electrode and bring about a premature deterioration or an internal short circuit. However, AC current higher than kilohertz order does not bring about charge-discharge reactions because the AC current flows through double layer capacitance. So the internal AC heating technique achieves efficient heating without premature deterioration or safety concerns. However, conventional AC heating techniques face three issues. The first issue is the increased system complexity. This figure shows the leaf system using internal AC heating techniques. In addition to a bidirectional converter for charge-discharge control, the heating inverter is necessary to generate an AC heating current, and it increases the system complexity and cost. The second issue is the heating time. The LMS values of AC heating currents should desirably be increased to shorten the heating time. However, triangular and sinusoidal waves are not ideal because at a given peak current, their LMS current values are low compared to those of square and trapezoidal waves. 
therefore the heating time becomes wrong. The third issue is inductor size. These waveforms represent the gate source voltages and AC heating current of two conventional methods. The most important point here is the relationship between switching frequency and heating frequency. In the left hand figure, a switching frequency is designed equal to the heating frequency, and in the right hand figure, a switching frequency is half to the heating frequency. A heating frequency is generally a few kilohertz to avoid premature deterioration of a leaf, and therefore, a switching frequency is also a few kilohertz. Accordingly, an inductor tends to be large. Here, I'm going to review the issues of conventional internal AC heating. There are three issues. The first issue is increased system complexity and cost by additional inverter. Second, long heating time by low LMS value at a given peak current is concerned. And the third issue is a large inductor size due to the low switching frequency. So today, I'd like to propose a novel converter to solve these issues. Here is a proposed dub converter. The proposed converter is derived from sharing two legs of the AC heating inverter and dub converter and integrating two converters into a single unit. Leaf is divided into two parts, V1H and V1L, and its midpoint is connected to the inverter's output. DC blocking capacitors are necessary when V1H and V1L are not equal. The proposed converter can reduce four switches by sharing two racks, so achieve the simplified system and low cost. This converter operates either in the AC heating mode or power transfer mode. In the AC heating mode, the proposed converter generates a trapezoidal current wave by PWM control, and its current achieves short heating time and small inductor size. In the next few slides, I will be showing you the detail of AC heating mode. This slide shows the operation of AC heating mode. Here are theoretical waveforms in the AC heating mode. Blue line shows the different signal, and red line shows the carrier wave. The comparison of the different signal and carrier wave determines the gate signal and make trapezoidal current wave. This picture shows the comparison of peak currents for same LMS values. The proposed trapezoidal current deduces the peak current value. At a given peak current, the LMS value of trapezoidal current wave is the highest, and therefore the trapezoidal current can shorten the heating time. Additionally, the inverter can operate at high switching frequency with a low heating frequency, compared to the conventional method. Therefore, the inductor can be designed rather smaller than that in the traditional AC heating inverter. In the AC heating mode, only primary side switches are driven. I'd like to emphasize that high side switches synchronize, and so do low side switches. Therefore, the primary winding voltage is zero. So the proposed converter can heat up the lip without transferring power to the secondary side. The AC heating mode is divided into four modes. Modes 1 and 3 are over moderation mode, and modes 2 and 4 are constant current mode. In modes 1 and 3, the absolute value of reference signal is always higher than the carrier wave, changing the current direction rapidly. In modes 2 and 4, the converter switches at a fixed frequency and duty cycle and keeps the current constant. But when duty cycle is 50%, the current decays due to resistive component and cannot keep constant. So the proposed moderation method induces bias voltage free bias to compensate for the resistive component and keep the current constant. Bias voltage is derived by the state space abrasion method as shown here. This equation suggests that bias voltage is uniquely decided from the resistive component so the proposed method can be applied to various deep systems with any resistive component values. 
This right shows the operation of the power transfer mode. The principle of operation of the power transfer mode is the same as that of the ordinary gap converter, so I will skip the detailed explanation. In power transfer mode, the converter transfers the power by directionally by phase shift control. L1 and L2 should be designed rather higher than leakage inductance. Accordingly, the current flowing through the transformer is dominant against the current flowing through L1 and L2. And then, the proposed converter can be regarded as an ordinary gap converter. Now, I'd like to show you the results from our experimental verifications. We did a deep heating test and a power transfer test with this prototype. Here are the experimental conditions of heating test. The inductances of the prototype are well said those of the conventional converter designed for the same specifications. The heating test was conducted using 12 cell cylindrical batteries. The leaf was placed in a thermostatic chamber and the initial leaf temperature was minus 10 degrees. Here, you can see the experimental results of the heating test. These waveforms agreed well with the theoretical winds and the LMS current value was 8.2 ampere. The bottom left pictures show the temperature distribution observed by the thermography. These pictures demonstrated that the temperature increased by internal AC heating. This graph shows the temperature evolution of battery. The blue line shows the heating result by trapezoidal wave, and the red line shows the heating result by sinusoidal wave with the same peak current. Also, sinusoidal wave increased the lip temperature from minus 10 degree to 0 degree in 8 minutes. The trapezoidal wave heated the battery in 4 minutes. This result demonstrated that the heating time was halved compared to the conventional method using sinusoidal current. This slide shows the deep voltage profile. The initial deep voltage was 48 volt, corresponding to the scale of charge of 89%. After the voltage drop due to powering the heating inverter, the voltage gradually recovered to around 45.7 volt. Finally, the deep voltage was 46.8 volt. The SOC decreased by around 12 points in the 15 minute heating process. Now, I'd like to show you a power transfer test. Here is the experimental setup for power transfer test. Closing the top X allows the converter to transfer power from the primary to secondary side. On the other hand, by selecting the top Y, the converter transfers the power from the secondary to primary side. Red capacity electrolytic capacitors were used instead of actual leaves. Characteristics of the proposed and ordinary gap converters were compared by removing these components. And experimental conditions are here. Here, we had the experimental results of the power transfer test. These waveforms were in good agreement with the theoretical ones. Here are the measured characteristics of output power as a function of phase shift angle. As you can see this graph, the difference of the characteristics with or without added components was minor. These results demonstrated that the components added for the AC heating capability do not affect the power transfer characteristics of the gap converter. I'd like to conclude by making the following points. In this presentation, I propose the gap converter integrating an AC heating inverter to improve the cruising distance of EV in cold areas. By showing two legs, four switches can be deduced and the proposed converter achieves the simplified system and low cost. This converter operates either in the AC heating mode or power transfer mode, and in AC heating mode, this converter generates trapezoidal current wave for the shortened heating time and inductor mutualization. I showed some experimental results. Our results indicate the following. First, the proposed converter helps the heating time compared to that of the conventional method using sinusoidal current with the same peak value. Second, the proposed converter transfers the power by directionally similar to ordinary gap converter. 
that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.